Okay, so this is another package that's definitely too big for my desk. But since you guys like the MSI monitor video so much, I'm going to give this another shot. But now with an ASUS Tough monitor. Let's get into it. Before we continue with this video, I would like to remind you that if you are enjoying this content, please leave a like and subscribe to my channel. I'm a solo content creator and I do all this to make sure that all of you are informed about the products you're about to purchase. Every subscription helps keep this channel running. Thank you. Now, onto the video. Inside this box is the Asus Tough VG2491A gaming monitor. Being a tough model, it's slotted mainly into the entry to mid-level price tier, and as such, it comes in just a printed cardboard box. That's alright. There are no details on the box, just a grayscale photo. Let's get it unboxed. As is usual for monitors, the panel is enclosed between two big pieces of styrofoam to protect it from bumps during shipping. Also included in the box are the plastic feet, the power cable, an HDMI cable, and a display port cable. It's got the basics down. Do note that the feet screw into the stem via a captive, tool-free screw, so you don't need to bust out the screwdriver if you want to use this straight out of the box. Upon removing the panel from the wax paper, we can see that it's entirely made of plastic. No metal here, since it's an entry-level monitor. Let's go on a little tour. As the name implies, the Asus Tough VG249 Q1A is a 24-inch IPS gaming monitor. And at the back, we can see that it supports 100mm VSEB mounting holes. The stem is detachable via four screws. This is important if you don't want to have the stem just hanging under it if you ever go the route of VESA mounting it. There is a joystick nipple for menu navigation, along with four buttons for controls and shortcuts. There is also a Kensington slot in the body for security. Here at the I.O., we can see that it's got the basics down pat, with two HDMI 1.4 ports, a DisplayPort 1.2, and a 3.5mm audio jack. Pretty useful if you want to use this monitor with a speaker. It does not come with an external power supply, instead it uses a 3 prong power cable to connect directly to the wall. That's everything, let's see it turned on, and let's check what it can do. So upon attaching the plastic feet, we can see the range of movement of the panel. There is no swivel, rotate, or height control, only forwards and backwards tilt. Upon opening up the screen, we're greeted by a nice, vibrant 1080p image. This is a matte-finished IPS panel with an LED backlight. It has a 1 millisecond response time and a maximum brightness of 250 nits. It is an 8-bit panel that can display 16.7 million colors. I've got the VG249 Q1A connected to a Zephyrus G15 via USB-C to DisplayPort 1.2 out. Since HDMI 1.4 is limited to 120Hz at 1080p, whereas DisplayPort 1.4 will go up to the panel's maximum refresh rate of 165Hz. Upon opening up the OSD of the monitor, we can see that it has many built-in features for imaging and gaming. Let's run through some of them. Starting at the top, we can see the tough gaming icon and it contains the gaming-centric features of the panel. It has overclocking, meaning you can select a maximum refresh rate between 144Hz and 165Hz. Next are 5 levels of variable overdrive. Turn this up and it will reduce the amount of image trailing or ghosting on the panel at the expense of image quality and sharpness. Next is a toggle for AMD FreeSync Premium. If you're running an AMD GPU, you can activate it for tear-free, low latency and low flicker visuals in your games. And since it's the premium tier, you also get low frame rate compensation at at least 120Hz at 1080p resolution. Next is ELMB or Extreme Low Motion Blur, which is a form of panel strobing. To counteract the motion blur of having the pixels take too long to switch to new colors when showing a moving image, ELMB will strobe the backlight of the panel in between refreshes to have the colors change faster. Obviously, this comes at the cost of panel brightness. It comes in two settings, Turbo and Standard. If you're a competitive FPS player, this setting is a must. Next is Game Plus, which lets you add an overlay to the monitor. It has a crosshair, timer, FPS counter, and display alignment overlay option. 
Next is Game Visual, which are predefined image settings for the monitor that are suited for certain game genres. The default out of the box is Scenery Mode, which has a super vibrant image. Mode 2 is Racing Mode, a personal favorite setting of mine which tones down the image a bit and lights the dark areas. This is a much more neutral mode than the rest. Mode 3 is Cinema, which presents a bright, saturated image with a slight clip at the blacks just to contrast everything slightly. Mode 4 is RTS RPG Mode, which presents a similar image to scenery, albeit the brightness is clipped a bit more aggressively. Mode 5 is FPS, which straight up oversaturates everything to maximize enemy visibility and shooters. Mode 6 is not for gaming, but still useful to have, sRGB mode. This neutralizes the entire panel and sticks to the sRGB color space. Very useful if you're going to do color work or want to view images in neutral tone. Lastly, we have MOBA mode, which turns the panel grayscale, except for use of green and red. This allows MOBA players to focus on health bars and danger indicators inside of their games. Pretty useful. Next up in the gaming settings is Shadow Boost, which boosts the shadows a bit to make certain high contrast or shadowy games to be much more visible without blowing out the highlights. Think of this as sort of a rudimentary HDR mode. There are three levels to it, so you have some fine control over how much boost you're getting. Back to the main OSD options, we have the image settings where you can control the brightness and contrast of the panel. Additional settings you can fiddle with are Vivid Pixel, which artificially enhances the outline and contrast of the objects in the scene to afford you more visibility in otherwise flat images. ASCR, which stands for ASUS Smart Contrast Ratio, enhances the display's dynamic contrast ratio by automatically adjusting the brightness of the panel. Paired with Shadow Boost, this functions as sort of a fake HDR. Aspect Control is grayed out since we're running off of DisplayPort. And lastly, we have the blue light filter setting, which reduces the amount of blue in the image to lessen the strain on your vision, especially when using the monitor in dark environments. There are four levels of blue light filter. Next up in the main OSD is color control. Unfortunately, there is only the color temperature control. Saturation and skin tone is grayed out, but if you use a different game visual setting, these settings will be opened up. Next is input select, Favorites and System Startup. In System Startup is where you can adjust the system language, sound volume, toggles for eco mode, power indicator line, power key lock, key lock, set up the OSD, see the panel information, and of course perform a factory reset. Alright, that's a deep dive into the Asus Tough VG249Q1A. Let's give it a gaming test. For testing, I'll be using it in three games, representing different imaging scenarios for games. To really show how Asus intends the monitor to be used, I will capture two clips for the games, one with the monitor in stock scenery mode and the next in the recommended game visual mode, with some tweaks to the other settings that I feel brings out the best image available on the panel. I will list down the settings so you can try it out for yourself. First up is the bright, colorful, and medium-paced Dirt 5. On the stock scenery mode, it already looks pretty great. There is good contrast between the dirt road and the cars, and image sharpness is fine, given that this is a 1080p monitor. On the adjusted image, since most rally racing in Dirt 5 happens under bright sun, I found it pertinent to give the shadows a little boost. Second is the fast-paced world war of Battlefield 2042. Scenery mode is already somewhat a feast for the eyes in this setting, with the grand vistas looking very saturated in the distance. But setting game visual to FPS mode reigns that in a little bit, and adds somewhat of a sharpening filter to see objects better. This is probably the best example of game visual adding to the experience of the game I have in this video. Lastly, we head to the cinematic world of God of War, where scenery mode is somewhat apt, until you see it in RTS slash RPG mode, where there is kind of less contrast but able to resolve much more detail, even if it's just a 1080p image. It's kind of like a fake HDR effect. 
I found it useful to turn on Vivid Pixel in this setting, as it allows for the foreground to pop without meddling too much with the overall ambience of the image. So that's the Asus TUF VG249Q1A gaming monitor. Are you just as impressed as I am with this little screen? Let me know in the comments. As always, please like and subscribe, check out my previous video, and stay tuned to my channel for more tech and tech-adjacent videos. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.